What to review? The what now? Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode, another edition of What We Can Geekdom. Geo here, and today we're doing something completely different, something that I know will alienate a lot of you. I don't really mind. I don't really care. I'm, I'm doing this just for fun, because everybody is in an uproar, and I wanted to ease the tension a little bit and do something completely different, and I'm doing a not-safe-for-work review, even though I'm censoring everything just know that the material that's being discussed here is for adults so i made that disclaimer i don't want to see any silly comments whatever <laughs> that said today uh we are reviewing from yen press we are reviewing the first volume of interspecies reviewers i gotta be honest with you i had no idea about this book i found out about it over the controversy with the whole uh funimation anime thing which was hilarious i mean if you don't know this series and i'll tell you uh right now a good portion watching this video will immediately be turned off completely that's all right i don't mind uh, Interspecies Reviewers is a manga written by uh, Amahara with art by Masha, and it is about reviewers in a magical setting world that's filled with monster girls and different uh, creatures of myths and legends like uh, giant lizards or uh, Chimera or Succubus or uh, salamander girls it, it it goes on and on uh, <laughs> cyclops uh oh boy okay this is gonna be a hard thing to review puns intended uh, <laughs> so basically we follow adventurers that uh review succubus brothels because this is a world where uh prostitution is legal it's a uh it's not shamed upon and there's even a mini plot point to the series that the leading political party in this world, the Orc Party, has the lowest tax uh, levels for uh, this whole uh, adventure land. <laughs> and uh, prostitution is legal and gambling and food and stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's a good place for these characters to inhabit, I guess. So... Uh, with that said, uh, our main heroes, if you want to call them heroes, regardless, our main heroes, Zell the Elf, uh, Stunk the Human Adventurer, and Krim the uh, Angel, and of course some other uh, secondary characters that show up from time to time, they take it upon themselves to review the brothels and sort of do like an Amazon review for products, but instead it's for the establishment and the different uh, creature girls, I guess. Uh, I know, I know, it sounds bizarre, it's weird. Bear with me. There is something really interesting in here. Just the idea alone, the concept of the series, it's so stupid and bonkers that when I heard about it and I watched uh, an episode of the anime, I told myself, I gotta watch this. I gotta check it out. So I went ahead and picked up the manga. I picked up the first volume and it's a thin uh, manga. Uh, I was surprised by that. So volume one is fairly comedic and i know uh, the story is not going to be for everybody a lot of people are going to be turned off completely and we'll <laughs> write this off as geo has gone crazy he's gotten mad and he's doing unwholesome reviews uh you know what uh with the way things are in the world i said screw it you only live once and the story was so silly and, and bonkers like I said that I picked up the series and I wanted to read it and do uh, some sort of uh, video on this channel 
So yeah, that's basically the plot. We follow these guys go into different uh, brothels or suck you girl joints, I guess. And part of what's fun about it is that typically you have manga that deal with uh, these sorts of uh, sexual themes, I guess. But this takes all the tropes that you know from fantasy books like Cyclops or Medusa-esque lizard people or uh, friggin' uh, harpy-like uh, bird ladies, I don't know, uh, fairies and will-o'-wisp. Uh, it, it goes down a rabbit hole of <laughs> tropes and genres and uh, themes and girls. I'll just say that much. So it takes all of that and gives you something completely different that I've never seen in a manga before. It's technically not hentai. It's not an H manga because there's barely any sexual stuff in it. Can you believe that? Uh, it's mostly them. You get a little uh, fan service -y look at all these uh, creature girls. Of course, there is a ton of nudity, but there's no sexual acts in the plot of the book, save for like one or two uh, brief pages, and they don't show anything. They don't. It's just uh, soft core uh, raunchiness, if you will, which was interesting because the anime got a lot of heat for how. Ex borderline explicit it was, which of course caused uh, Funimation to dump the series and <laughs> leave the title in limbo, which I thought was hilarious that people threw a fit over it. I mean, that's a natural reaction for a company to take, you know, they made a mistake, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, the manga, you gotta look at it as a sex comedy. Uh, what's fun is that they're giving out their reviews like it's like you're reading off of a Craigslist or an Amazon or something like that and they score it from 0 to 10 and you actually get some really detailed anatomy and um, explanations about these creatures whether it's a uh, god I'm saying this Jesus Christ uh, the cow curl or a harpy, or a octopus tentacle month. It's, oh boy, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> but I will say, I've shown a couple images. The art is really interesting. I, I love the way the characters are designed. Uh, Krim and, and Stunk and all these guys and, and the girls and everything. It exudes a playful sexiness to it, but at the same time, it's raunchy as hell as you keep going. It gets raunchier and raunchier, and there are some sub-stories that I cannot talk about in this video. That's how uh, raunchy things get, and yeah. So if you're into that sort of thing, if you, if you just want to have a fun time and read something completely different, and you don't mind the subject matter, Hell, I don't even want to show you some of the stuff here. Uh, can I can I show you anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, I like the art style. It's, it's funny looking and uh, none of the characters feel generic in any sort of way. Um, they all have a uniqueness to the way they're drawn and portrayed, I guess. Uh, let's see if I can actually every single page I flip there's something different there uh, yeah you know it can go very uh, SD chibi-esque with certain panels but for the most part it's pretty uh, interesting you know This series has a strange way of deconstructing uh, tropes and myths and all that stuff, and it's evident in the portrayal of age difference. The character of Stunk is a fan of elves and, you know, elf girls and all that stuff. He finds this girl to be extremely uh, sexy and cute and whatnot, but Zell, who is this pervy uh, elf, he 
uh, he's not down with it because uh, if you know your uh, myths and folklore, elves uh, they live a very long time. So he quickly points out like, oh, she's an old hag. But humans, with our shorter lifespan, we don't really see it that way. Uh, so eternal beauty and, and a young character like that will be a turn on for a character like Stunk. And you flip that on its head when Zell is in love with uh, human uh, brothel workers. And she is a late 50s older woman. And Stunk just says the same thing, like, that's an old hag. So I thought it was pretty comedic where you're taking attributes about uh, folklore and stuff like that and twisting it and making something comedic out of it. Also the betrayal of Krim and how he lost his standing on heaven and his halo is broken so he's trying to fix it before he can return and instead gets wrangled up with the rest of the guys and just is participating in the debauchery. I just find that hilarious, and it speaks to the human condition, I guess. In the internet, if you check out the series, they'll have some uh, strong opinions about all the characters, especially Krim. But all the characters in their own stupid, naive way, they're, uh, they're pretty entertaining. So just look at it as an adult comedy with a ton of raunchiness and uh, actually really cool world building because you get to see myths and legends thrown in a completely different way than you, what you're used to. So if you don't mind uh, any of what I've talked about and you want to give it a go, uh, maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll hate it. I, I, don't, I don't know. But still, it's a fun and interesting uh, story and uh, it certainly it certainly leaves an impression on you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there you go, guys. That is my uh, first impressions, first review. I don't know. My my review for inner, <laughs> my review for inner species reviewers volume one. So it sort of got a little bit meta there with the title. If you check this out, which I know I'm gonna be alone in this. If you've checked this out, let me know what you thought down below. Very interested in finding out. Also, yeah, why the hell not? What is your favorite um, sex comedy in uh, manga or comics, anime? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay, so yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, as always, you can follow me on social media. You can like, comment, subscribe, hit the uh, little bell icon so you know when new videos pop up. And yeah, that's that's about it. I promise for my uh, Safe for Work crowd, I promise I will do uh, regular reviews. I just wanted to get this off the list because why the heck not, right? We live in uncertain times and I just wanted to... Uh, uh, put out a video where you laugh at me being so shy about reviewing a book. So, there you go. <laughs> Thank you everybody for tuning in. I will catch all of you on our next video.